Well, some Republicans rallied with Democrats to tank the resolution brought forth by Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene that would have censored Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib over her ongoing criticism of Israel amid its war with Hamas. 23 GOP lawmakers joined all Democrats in voting down this resolution, with the final tally being 222 to 186. Democrats and Republicans came together to rescue embattled GOP Congressman George Santos, too. Despite his mounting legal troubles, the motion to boot him from Congress failed. 24 Republicans voted to expel him, 31 Democrats voted to keep him put, while 19 lawmakers voted present, 15 of them Democrats, coming in far short of the two-thirds majority needed. Now, newly elected Speaker Mike Johnson waved off the pair of failed votes, telling Fox News' Sean Hannity, quote, it was resolved on the floor and we allow members to vote their conscience on that. It's important for us to beat the Democrats on policy. There's a lot of issues that are before us right now, unquote. So these were not, you know, like strictly equivalent votes. They wanted to do censure for Tlaib, and this would have actually been a vote to expel George Santos from the House, which I, I think is a would have been a pretty dramatic step, given the, invest, the ethics investigation against him is still pending. The criminal matters, it's, you know, he's entitled to due process. I, of course, he's not entitled to a seat in the House, but um, it seems to me like it would have been jumping the gun. Um, I don't know if that was Democrats supporting due process or supporting the idea that it's better for their own hopes of winning back that seat if George Santos keeps it. Uh, I don't know. You can be cynical about it, but um, not, to my mind, not exactly the wrong outcome. Yeah. Well, some Democrats said exactly that, um, that there was a, you know, let, let the legal action take the course that the legal action is going to take, and we'll see what happens then. No need to be premature. It is interesting that Rashida Tlaib was one of those that did not vote to, uh, to, to boot mm -hmm. uh, Santos. It does seem plausible that it's front of mind for all involved, that if we really are going to get into this situation where we're censoring and trying to expel members of Congress for things short of that which they've been criminally convicted of, and that is actual criminal wrongdoing, this could spread really far, really wide, and catch up a lot of people. I think the uh, Tlaib censorship um, uh, vote you know, put forward by uh, Rashida, uh, um, sorry, Marjorie Taylor Greene is really part and parcel of something bigger that should be concerning for Democrats. I'm not sure that it is, given how many of them do agree, frankly, that she is out of line and advocating for Palestinians the way she has over the last three weeks or so. Um, but I think for the broader American public, it should be deeply concerning that we're in a place where an American lawmaker is being told that unless she all but apes closely aligns herself with another country's foreign policy objectives that she could be criticized by her own government's house. I mean, yeah, I think uh, I, I'm not, I, I think I agree with you that I'm not big into these censure votes. I think they can easily become abused. If, you know, both sides are going to start um, taking votes to punish members um, whenever they have the majority or whenever somebody says something kind of dumb. I, I think that sh this sh um, this course of action should be reserved for something truly out of the ordinary, um, or maybe like like targeted harassment or something of sure. another of another member, m rather than merely a dissenting political opinion. Um, I disagree with a lot of things Tlaib has said about the conflict. Um, I think her like tripling and quadrupling down on um, on the hospital story, for instance, which has a Ambiguous, if not um, if not leaning one way, uh, solution at this point or was it down, or was it just refusing to with, withdraw her statement about it until there's a final resolution about what happened there? She, re yeah, she refused to withdraw her statement. But okay. Ilan Omar withdrew her statement and said, "We don't know yet." Yeah, I just was quibbling with the characterization. Well, Tlaib didn't do that. Yeah, but I don't think she continued I, to assert that Israel, the Israeli forces, were at fault for that. Yeah, she's well. I, okay, that, I think that's a... That is what she did. Okay. She tweeted it several times. She said it at a rally. She never corrected it. She didn't that, correct that's, back that's to the... That's the question. Did, did she keep saying it after there was some ambiguity injected yes, into the situation? she did. Okay. That, Contrast with what Ilhan Omar did, for example, which is to say there's some conflicting and I don't know.
which is fine. Okay. The, uh, I was going to say that Marjorie Taylor Greene is not pleased about this at all. Mm -hmm. uh, she hopped on Twitter and said, this is a list of feckless Republicans that voted with Democrats to table my censor resolution against Rashida Tlaib. This is why Republicans never do anything to stop the communist Democrats or ever hold anyone accountable. Pathetic. And then she did, in fact, um, include a photograph of a list uh, on, on uh, her Twitter page, followed by a list of Republicans that didn't vote at all. Do you think this is reflective of uh, any kind of flailing from this wing of the Republican Freedom Caucus, or whatever you want to call this wing of the party that is hoping for a more uh, adversarial approach to the Democrats? I mean, I think Freedom Caucus-type people like Marjorie Taylor Greene should, you know, keep their eyes on the prize. Um, supposedly your ascendant with this new speaker, Mike Johnson. Um, let's concentrate on stopping the weaponization of the federal government, um, continuing the investigation into, um, into uh, the Bidens, um, looking at how uh, the federal government and the bureaucracy has come after speech and due process for dissenting or contrarian Americans. Um, I, hopefully, I would like to see some reining in of uh, reckless spending, including of defense spending. You know, there are a lot of priorities, policy priorities. That's what um, Speaker Johnson said there. Like, what if we censured Rashida Tlaib? Even if, the, if like if that succeeded, what is the? How does that help anyone? So if you want well, to criticize her all you want, again, I'm criticizing her too. Um, I've criticized Ilan Omar for retweeting images claiming that they're images of um, killed Palestinians when they're actually images of dead Syrians from earthquakes or from Assad's attacks on his people from years ago. Um, I think that deserves criticism. It just doesn't deserve some formal yeah. action by the House. And it is interesting that there have been no calls to censor. I mean, it's not the same for the President of the United States, obviously, but to even ask for an apology or a personal retraction from Joe Biden after lying about the 40 beheaded babies that have yet to materialize. His campaign, I, his administration got away with putting a retraction out to the press without him ever, I, as I understand it to date, being asked about why he specifically averred that he had seen evidence of something that even the IDF. Did. That even the IDF said that That's they had no true. evidence of. That's not true. The the I, it's been shared on social media. The Israeli government has said this is the picture that we've shown Joe Biden. That is literally not. That is so, that is uh, that is not true, Robbie. It is absolutely true. How many times do you have to see pictures of blown apart children before you concede? I see pictures that of blown apart children every single day, Robbie. They're Palestinian children. What I have not. So you're seen, saying there are no Israeli blown apart children? What is wrong with you? I don't like. I, I don't. I, I just don't Look, get it. Robbie, we're sitting here in front of the computer right now. How about you pull up the confirmation that there was there were forty beheaded Israeli children that were found at that location that was reported by what was it? I that is Israeli news report on that day, and we finally follow up that the White House retracted its retraction of its own story, which said Joe Biden misspoke. He did not, in fact, see visual confirmation of 40 beheaded babies. And show me where the Israeli media, but very Listen specifically said, we cannot. Listen to yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm seen, hearing myself loud and clear, we Robbie. We have seen images. I don't know. <laughs> there are you, Robbie, exactly let, let, let me, 40 let me, babies me. that were killed by decapitation, but I've seen burned babies. Wait, I've seen so now, now, Robbie, you're saying, so for, for example, America just experienced a horrible shooting tragedy last week where 18 people were killed in Maine by a shooter. You're saying that if someone reported that a shooter killed 18 people, 30 people in Texas, but later, to a week later, the main story happened. You say, oh, it's the same thing. The point is that a shooter killed 18 people in America somewhere, so the story that was originally reported about a Texas shooter is valid? I have no, I'm saying I have no idea precisely how many children were killed in exactly that matter. Well, we're starting and to find out. And it doesn't matter. It does, it just it doesn't does matter. matter. No, it matters to you because you're trying to minimize the cruelty and the violence that Hamas perpetrated. No, it does Which is not no, something I'm actually, trying to do with the Palestinian deaths. It matters to me because re repeatedly, various Israeli officials have been trying to literally characterize Palestinians as, quote, human animals who are quote, Hamas no, human animals literally Palestinians well that's there wrong have been and a they number should not, I know and we well, played them okay you said it's them. wrong I'm so glad that you think it's wrong it doesn't change the fact that Israeli politicians have been saying it they have been saying without some of them specifically have said I do not want to distinguish between 
Hamas and I think it was uh, Herzog, the president, said in this very famous statement at this point, there's no point in distinguishing. I do not want to distinguish between Palestinians and um, Hamas. That they, they've been characterized repeatedly as human animals. Gaza has been characterized as a place that they want to raise to the ground. We will re report later in today's reporting about an intelligence document that came out expressing a plan to do an ethnic genocide to basically conclusively push all Palestinians out of the region into the Sinai and what would be ethnic cleansing and or genocide, depending on what international definition you want. So it's very important to me that as we see the bodies pile up, 9,000 Palestinians killed over the last three weeks, 70 percent of those women and children, that the people who are doing that aren't able to get away with it because they have characterized Palestinians as animals whose deaths are beneath notice. And part of that, in doing so, is saying that they didn't just kill people, because if it's a one-to-one -one ratio of who's killing people, Israel, at this point, is more guilty than the Palestinians, numbers-wise. You have to add something— Than Hamas. Than the Hamas. Palestinians are not guilty. Than Hamas. Hamas is guilty. Than, than Hamas. They're more guilty than Hamas, numbers-wise. Correct. But if you add in an extra quality, oh, it's how they're killing them. It's the brutality of how they're killing them. It's the violence, irrepressible violence of these people. Then suddenly the scales start to shift a little bit. So that is why it's very important that the President of the United States not get away that's with the, lying with that's impunity not the difference, the from difference, the pulp, from the, the, pulp, the, the presidential okay. platform that That's we not have. the difference. The difference is that what, is that what Israel is doing is part of an effort to root out a terrorist group that attacked them. Right, as it bombed repeatedly the same refugee camp, you want, the largest you can, you want a ceasefire. refugee camp. There was a ceasefire. Who violated the ceasefire? What are you talking Hamas. about? Hamas. What are you talking about? A state of a state of ceasefire existed until Hamas perpetrated the terrorist attack. Oh, they do that, okay. and then you want to say, "Oh, now ceasefire! You, I'm you sorry. killed a bunch of people. You have died. No ceasefire." I, Robbie, you're right. I tagged you. No tag back. You're, you're completely right. The 2.3 million people who are living with non potable water uh, in an open air prison that's been co condemned by 18 humanitarian groups, where they're not allowed to come and go, where they're not allowed to fish more than a few feet out into the water because they're under a blockade, where their nutritional um, food requirements are under met. And, and half the population, almost half the population, is severely malnourished. Um, they should have. It's their fault. They're bad. I didn't say it's their fault. Um, I said it's Hamas. I forgot. Fault. I forgot the whole conflict it's Israel's fault. started. I do think that it's Israel's fault that Palestinians, two point three Palestinians, are kept in capti captivity in the Gaza Strip. And I don't have to just aver that as a personal belief. It's what the entire international community has come to the conclusion of. And only when that is resolved will we have peace in that region. Well, that's not what Hamas wants, and that's not what the Israeli government wants, it's, so we're going to get more of this. It is what Hamas has articulated it wanted. Hamas it's, wants the elimination of Israel. They want a, what, they want a dictatorial Islamic state. The, the area they govern, Gaza, is not a secular liberal democracy. It's an Islamic theocracy. They're going okay. to take over all of Israel and then just say, okay, now we vote on who's in charge? That's ridiculous. That's fanciful. An Islamic theocracy. Gaza has been very limited in its ability to have an actual government. It's not a country. It is not allowed to be in control of commerce. It's not allowed to be in control of exporting goods. It's not allowed to be in control of its own waterways. It's not allowed to be in control of its own electricity, its water, its or authority. anything. It's authority. The, per the group conducting this war does Israel. not want a secular Israel. democracy. I want that. That would be great. No, no, you no. want that. We want that. No, no, no. But none of the people Bobby. involved in this conflict actually well, want that. How many that? times do we have to do this? You know, correct, that Bibi Netanyahu pied pipered uh, Hamas into leadership, that there it has been explicitly the plan of his right-wing government that if there is a more secular, internationally accepted leadership in, Ga in, in Gaza, like the PLO, like the Palestinian Authority, that they would lose credibility as they do things like rose, row the, mow the lawn, as they call yes. it, and periodically no, I, bomb and kill Palestinians. Correct? Absolutely. You admit to absolutely. all of that. So why is it that you pay, place so much responsibility on the population of Gaza, half of whom are children. I'm not children. putting any responsibility on the population so of Gaza. So I'm putting responsibility you? on Hamas. Not right. Israel, the leadership of Israel so the, the does not want equal rights for the Palestinians. I don't agree with that. Wait a minute. How they don't want any of those things. Hamas also doesn't want those things. Right. So, so, so isn't that So you're complaining that the, the combatants in this struggle, neither of them want what all of us think would be best. Right. 
That's unfortunate, so, but it's just reality. But here's the thing. We can magically wish they had different My, goals like in this scholars, conflict, but they don't. You're right. The Hamas and Israel largely have some overlap in goals, which is why Israel put Hamas in charge, which is why I'm criticizing Israel, whose government I fund well, with criticized, my, yeah, my tax dollars. Yeah, I criticize Israel for that as well, and I don't want to fund So them. I don't understand why you're Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. I, do you have Hamas's phone number? Are you sending money to Hamas? Because I have no relationship to Hamas. I do have a relationship with Israel. I live in a country Well, it's not, it's where not a willing relationship. I, no, it might, no, mine being plundered in order to pay for their defense. Right. I don't support that. We're so, on board. We're on, so that is why it is continually confusing to me while you object and become so emotive about the question of holding Israel responsible, since it's Israel that's tethered to our government. It's Israel that's that's characterized repeatedly as our, our closest brother on the planet. It's Israel where, after the uh, horrible attacks of October 7th happened, Joe Biden hopped on a plane and threw his arms around Bibi Netanyahu, a right-wing leader whose own countrymen have been protesting against him in historic numbers earlier this year because of a radical right Supreme Court reform that even Israelis, not exactly the most progressive group in the bunch, see as a real threat to their democracy. Because I refuse to underplay the horrific nature of what occurred on October 7th. I, I, I won't do it. I don't think you should. I, I won't also, do it. And I think it's a real problem for you to see efforts to not demonize a population and Palestinians as as tantamount to downplaying I don't, the horror I have of people never that happened de on the I never demonized the Palestinians right, but ever. Every effort, I demonize Hamas. Every effort that it is I, appropriate to do so. Every effort that I make to push back against that demonization, you characterize as me trying to downplay the violence that Hamas enacted no, on I, the I don't think the demonization of Hamas should be pushed back on. The demonization of the Palestinians, absolutely. I think that's, I, I don't, as a humanist, I reject referring to any human being as an animal. I reject any language that's intended to lower my threshold or my country's threshold to take the life of other people, whoever they are. I understand that might not be your, be your position, but that's my who I am and my ethics. And I am never going to lead into bloodthirsty language that devalues a human life because that is how we get genocide. All right, we'll continue this discussion. A lot more today, more rising right after this.